So hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, oh, there's a, just there's like a, hey there, hey there. I'm a sassy white man. So, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is a video I've wanted to do for a very long time, but I've kept running into roadblock after roadblock, mostly having to do with the fact that I have so much trouble talking in front of the camera. Can you tell? After you see the five minute video of me being on screen talking and act like an idiot, uh, what you don't see behind the scenes is me going, okay, okay, okay. Whew, breathe, you're fine. Relax, you're good. Okay, now, say the lines, okay. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. All right, great, great. Okay, now say in front of the camera. What was that? Oh, fuck! And the other part having to do with the fear, I guess, of what the backlash might be for making this video in the first place. And I'm not trying to just come in and bash something that you like, because I have a lot of good things to say about Dystopia Rising as well. But with this being a review, I have to give it some constructive criticism, and that's what I intend to do. I also intend, if I'm going to make a complaint about something, I'm going to offer my version of a solution, because I hate it when people, you know, complain about something, and then you go, you know, oh, how would you do it differently? And they go, oh, I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, I don't know. Well, I mean, if you're not going to offer a solution, then just shut up. But you know, with that being said, I just don't want people to dislike my channel or unsubscribe if they have a problem with this. Because at the end of the day, this is just a review, and what a review is is just someone's opinion. And, and that means nothing's set in stone, you know? So it's not objectively right or wrong, it's just an opinion. So don't take anything I say too personally, it's just my opinion. But if you really think this video is an injustice to Stopia Rising, there's something you can do that's a lot more helpful than just a dislike. If you want to make a real difference, if you really want to help shape the future of this channel and make a lasting impression, the best option you can make is to comment below because I love talking to you guys. I love to having a, a nice civil conversation. So, so just make a respectful comment below about maybe things I overlooked, maybe things that I just plain got wrong. And let's have a dialogue. Let's have a respectful conversation and that will go worlds, worlds further than, than just a simple dislike or an unsubscribe or you're just gonna wait for me to come to the next game and then just crowd beat the shit out of me. Oh God. I bruise easily, don't, just don't hit me in the face. I'm in the face. I'm in the face. I'm just giving my point of view of how I feel about the game and, and a part of that's going to be addressing problems that I see with the game personally. So with that being said, let's get started. The first biggest problem I have with Dystopia Rising is the fact that it's just so overly complicated. The game is so vast and they're constantly adding more and more and more to it, it makes it very hard to remember all the rules and regulations that they've already established. The perfect example of this is whenever I make a YouTube video about any of the major subjects in Dystopia Rising. Like, let me put it you like this. Take any major subject about Dystopia Rising, right? Explain it in its entirety so a new player can understand all the aspects of that one subject in one short paragraph. Can't be done. It just, it can't be done. And that's because every single subject branches off into 30 little things and it's just, it makes it very difficult. And I don't think it's just me that has a hard time understanding the rules. Sometimes I feel like even senior players don't fully understand the rules. For instance, whenever I put a Dystopia Rising video out, the first couple people that show up, and these are senior players, mind you, are people telling me, oh, you did such a great job, good job, really enjoyed your video, and I greatly appreciate that because I need all the support I can get because I'm a very nervous person. But then later on, there'll be people that show up that go, hey, you made some mistakes here and that's incorrect there. And I greatly appreciate that too, because if my information's wrong, then these videos help no one. And that's not what I want. But the fact that these other senior players were complimenting my video, and then these guys show up that show the problems with these videos, it leaves me to believe one of two situations. Either one, it just, all the information relatively sounded right and it was easy to overlook. So I, that's a possibility, I can buy that. Or two, they actually thought everything I said was correct, which means some of your senior players still don't fully understand how your rule system works. And if that's the case, that's a problem. So uh, a solution for this problem would be to start simplifying things. And here's one of the best ways to do it. You have two abilities out there right now that just, they do the exact same thing, but you can't use them for the same scenarios. They're, they're the abilities uh, avoid, for gun users and parry for melee users. Now they essentially both do the same thing. When you get struck with a, a damage attack, you call this the, either of these abilities out. If you're uh, uh, if someone shoots a bullet at you, you call out avoid, and then the bullet damage is negated. 
unless it's start from behind, you know, this details, details, branching, branching, branching. So, and then if you get struck with a melee attack, uh, you call parry, and then that attack is negated. So, they both do the same thing, but it doesn't make sense because you can literally get shot point blank and then call a void, and that negates the attack. You can dodge, essentially, point blank gunfire, but you can't, you can't avoid a melee attack? How does that make any sense? So my, my, my solution would be, and this would just help your players out just a little bit more, is to just take parry and and avoid and just get rid of them both and just have dodge, have the ability dodge, and then you're then you're fine. That just simplifies the rules a little bit more and it gives your players a little less, they, 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 they don't have to hunt for all these abilities. They can just have this one simple ability that just they can use universally for all these problems and then it's just a lot less complicated and a lot more simple. All right, and that, and that leads us to the next biggest problem. The next biggest problem is the fact that it plays like a video game. Now, why is that a problem? Well, video games are a lot different. <laughs> like this this is this is one that is hard to explain because video games are they're they're not people, okay? Video video games are are can be complicated, but nothing is more complicated than a than a human being. And there there's some elements about being a human that just doesn't work in video game logic land and that's why those those elements are vacant in an actual video game. A video game runs like a machine and and they and the rules are constantly applied no matter where you are. So here's a perfect example. In a video game, in an actual video game, you know, your, let's say your character is running through the wasteland and he can only have a max inventory of five items and let's say it, it's it, all five item slots are filled with pencils, right? And he comes across a sixth item. Now if he tries to pick up that sixth item, what happens? He's not allowed to and a little icon or a little message appears on screen saying that he can't, he's not allowed to do that. So, but in reality, in real life, a person can just be like, yeah, I could basically fit all five of these pencils in one pocket and pocket that sixth item. So I don't understand why, why I can't what's what's up and and that that's a thing that's an element that's a problem in dystopia rising because there's no real safeguard against people doing that kind of thing for another example would be when you're scavenging a big problem that i see is there is absolutely nothing stopping a person from just picking up those item cards that you find that you scavenge for pocketing them whether they have the mind points or not and then just from the safety of wherever they are in complete privacy just scribble on to their little paper that oh yeah i totally scavenged at this time blah 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 complete safety here's the card turn it and get the reward but you know in a video game that couldn't happen because the rules are constantly enforced but I mean in dystopia rising the rules are only enforced as long as there's people around to enforce them so a, a, a solution to fix this problem I, I would suggest that you either start color coding your scavenge cards or start adding dates to them that way if a player does this act and turns in a card that's been out for too long or doesn't match the color system that the color code that you've got out at that per current time it doesn't have to necessarily mean he's cheating you can just be like look it's the card is not uh, up to date with the the schedule so basically it's just been it's just an item that's rusted away so you yet you, you haven't lost any mine points or maybe you have lost mine points that'd just be another uh, little landmine out there to uh start wasting people's mind points a little bit more and you don't get any reward from it so that way that there there you go there's your solution for that but also that's an, that's another uh pro issue i have with um, scavenging is it, you use mind points to identify a scavenge card that you find in the bushes. I mean, what's what's so hard on the mind about that? I've never dusted off an item and went. <sighs> this is a helmet. That made me mentally tired to figure that out. You see, it just it just doesn't make any sense. So I guess what I'm suggesting is maybe as a solution for this that I would change is start making scavenging doesn't cost mine points. Now I know what your what your complaint would be. Well then, wouldn't everyone be able to just scavenge to their heart's content, and then one person could just take everything and not have to spend any mine points on it. What you could do is instead make it so that scavenging is another leveling system that you can level up. And first level, you can only gather three cards a day. I think that for the sacrifice of not being able to scavenge more 
and wasting uh, your mind points on more scavenging and said you get to save all those mind points, I think it's a, a, a fair trade-off to only get three cards a day for your first um, level of scavenging than to waste mind points that you desperately need in game for defensive abilities. Hopefully that made sense. Another reason why a, a LARP that plays like a video game is a problem is because it doesn't take into account the human element, like intuition for example. This is a real life situation that I've run into in game. I was in the town hall and it was dark and it was nighttime and I, I was just you know, I was getting ready to actually leave that night because I was only there for a day trip. And some of the players were reacting to something outside. And so I, I kind of go, because I'm a helpful guy, I want to, so I go out there with my weapon and they were reacting to these creatures that were burrowing underground and you weren't allowed to see them or react to them in any way unless you had the ability alert that would cause them to pop out of the ground and so they'd be like, ah, we're here. But even though they were specifically told that they weren't allowed to be reacting to where they were going, they were still reacting as though I definitely heard some scrounging around out here I'm suspicious but I don't know where it is and this was perfectly acceptable because no one was saying anything about that so I turn and I start going back into the building to get more people out there and one of the the people that was an, an NPC at the time just off to the side he came and stopped me and he kind of scolded me a little bit and said like you can't just run inside and tell everyone that something's out here because you're not allowed to know you don't know that anything's out here unless you have the ability alert. And that's why I go, well, hold on. I almost wanted to argue the point that couldn't I just be reacting to how the players are reacting and go inside and go, hey guys, maybe, maybe not. There might be something outside. I don't know. Could someone come and check it out? That's called human intuition. That's knowing that there's a problem by looking at the situation even if there's, you can't see the problem, you know what I'm talking about? So humans have that ability and it's almost like the game's asking you to ignore that. And what happened next was a little bit of a cheap dick move, but uh, because I just didn't want to argue and I just was like, oh, pretending I didn't see anything, the guy comes up behind me right then and there, pretending he's being burrowing underground, and then he spam attacks me with his special abilities and uh, sends me into bleed out almost instantly because I'm a new player uh, also because you know all attacks that land from behind also you can't you can't block in any way shape or form so I basically got spam attacked by all these uh, special abilities that he just landed on me all at once and I was screwed so that that was really unfair and I had no way of defending myself against that so another helpful way to negate such bullshittery that would cause people to rage quit in an actual video game, which is something I don't think you would want to have happen. If you have a monster like this, make it so if he pops up out of the ground, his next, at the very least, two attacks have to be normal standard attacks. And monsters can't use more than one special ability in a row. Like they can't use it more than two times in a row. They have to go regular attack, special ability, regular attack, special ability. It has to work like that. That's just my, my solution for how you could fix this problem. Moving on. Man, this, this next point is one that I've had the a hell of a time trying to really articulate my words coherently because I've racked my brain about this over and over again and I've woken up in the middle of the night multiple times like, ha, oh, that's the perfect analogy. I'm a creature who loves to use figures of speech to um, illustrate a point. So, you know, forgive me. <laughs> and this is going to come across as harsh, uh, probably. And this is one of the things that I thought was probably going to piss people off that I don't want, but you, you gotta say what you gotta say. Um, the combat system sucks. Now that's a bold statement, I know, but bear with me. I'm going to back up my case. Now I've told all these gripes I'm about to make to other players before in the past, in, in game and online, and they, they've all told me their opinions and they've all mostly disagreed with me and they've all tried to explain it to me in a different way. And usually the conversation just ends up going in a loop because they keep trying to explain to me the same thing in just a different way and it's not a problem of understanding, it's just a matter of preference. Like the conversation will go, and I'm, I'm going to be respectful about this. Man, the 
combat system is completely skillless and the fighting's all number based and I'll go, man the combat system's completely skillless and the combat system's based on numbers. I mean we're saying the exact same thing but we're coming to two different results. I mean that just shows it's not a matter of understanding, it's just a matter of preference and my preference is skill based LARPs and not special ability skills, I mean personal skill. But maybe that makes me biased but I feel like a skill based combat system is the closest thing you can get to fair as possible. Now this next part's going to sound contradictory but bear with me. I actually don't think there's such a thing as a fair fight. There's the contradiction I know but there is a stark difference between natural unfairness and enforced unfairness. Let me let me give you another example. Now let's say you have these two players. We're going to call them player one and player two. Player one decides to join a skill based LARP for the next year and he practices, trains, fights other players and keeps his skills honed. Player two decides he's going to stay home not do any of that, sit on the couch, eat Cheetos, not keep in practice, not hone his skills. Then you take those two players and bring them together, have them fight each other, who's gonna win? Player one, right? Because he's in, he has more experience, right? Now, let's take that same scenario. And instead, this time, player two doesn't just sit on his ass and does nothing this whole time. He stays in practice at home. He practices with his friends. When player one comes to visit him, you know, they spar, they keep up with each other, they practice fighting each other. Now, take those two players and have them fight each other again, who's gonna win this time? See, it's not as easy to define as it was before because in a skill-based LARP, the fighting system is just based on your personal skill, not on any sort of number system, so, so a clear winner is a lot more harder to define. In a number-based LARP, you don't really have that kind of option to stay home and practice at home and hone your skills because there isn't any real skill set in Dystopia Rising's gameplay. If player 2 decides to stay home for a year while player 1 goes to Dystopia Rising for a year and they come and fight each other on the field, player one's going to win every single time because he has more mind points, health points, armor points, weapon damage points. He's hitting for eight while player two is hitting for twos. Like, And that's the enforced unfairness I was talking about earlier. Because in a skill-based LARP, there's never that guarantee you're going to win. It doesn't matter if you've been practicing your sword craft your whole life. If you fight a person in a battle, there's always that chance you're going to misstep, that you're going to misjudge that player's reach with his sword. You're just not going to time it just right. And sometimes you get tagged out. And that's just how a skill-based LARP works. And that brings me into my next point about the combat system and that it's just so bland. I mean, constantly when I'm talking to my friends about trying to get them involved in the game, I get to about where I start discussing the combat system and I just see their faces go, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested. Because it just sounds tedious and at times it just really is. Constantly when I'm in the game itself and I hear someone yell out, zombies are coming, raiders are coming. I just find myself groaning going, oh man, I have to go into fighting now. Because I'm already at a disadvantage as a new player because I'm going in going two, two, two. And some of the monsters are already at levels where they're hitting at five, sixes, sevens and spamming their special abilities, so I'm, I'm already in bleed out in the first five minutes. But in a skill-based combat system, you have such a large variety of different fighting techniques. Sometimes people like to use sword and shield, sometimes people like to dual wield. I myself have this kind of mixture between fencing and dual wielding that's a little bit of an odd combination if I really get into it, but I mean, it's completely my own. And sometimes if you get enough people together, you can perform a phalanx formation, but I mean, that would require lunging attacks and Dystopia Rising doesn't allow that, so that goes right out the window. I mean, the movements that you're allowed to perform when you're fighting are just so restricted that you're just sort of fighting robotically, and it's no exaggeration to say that your combat system is a lot like playing like a RuneScape character. Every attack is just chop, 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 chop. Wait, hold on. Did that guy just perform a lunge attack? I stand corrected. Dystopia Rising. Your combat system is more bland than RuneScape. If that's not a call for change, I don't know what is! Now, I don't expect Dystopia Rising to fundamentally change one of its major formats just to fit my needs because I whined about it on YouTube, but there is a way you guys can make it just a little bit easier on your players, especially your new ones. One way that would be very helpful is to make all starter weapons permanent. Now, I know that might seem extreme, but when you are in an environment that constantly tries to kill you, not having a weapon of any kind, kind of almost guarantees your death. Now what I would suggest is that all starter weapons from here on out would have a green tag on it so it would be identified as a starter weapon and one of the new rules would be that any other player other than the original owner of the weapon can't use it in combat so it would be stuck with them for basically the rest of their gameplay and when the character dies the weapon goes with them 
or if the player advances enough where they can get a new weapon easily, they can turn in their standard weapon but at no reward, like with a scrap card or anything like that. I mean, the weapons already don't do a significant amount of damage by themselves already, so... And when you can only get really three games of use out of them before they deteriorate and gone forever, when you're not even a casual player like me who only shows up to a game once every year if I'm lucky, that only puts me at a further disadvantage. And it's just one more thing stacked against me out the gate. Now the next biggest thing would probably be bumping up your starter weapons. Now I'm not saying you need to go crazy with it, but as of right now, I don't think it's that unreasonable to ask that you make all of your starter weapon damages go up by one. The dystopia branch that I go to seems to have evolved with its more senior players and constantly sends out higher and higher level monsters to fight them. But me as a new player, imagine it like plopping a level 1 into a level 80 area and saying, good luck! Sure, they do send out lower level monsters every now and then, but when you're a level 1 and you come across a monster that has 100 health and does 8 damage when your weapon only does 2, again, you're put at an even further disadvantage. And when you're constantly putting your players at a further and further disadvantage and constantly stacking the deck against them, who wants to keep playing? And another way of helping would be to start leveling off your areas in terms of danger from 1 through 5. This way, new players can stick to lower level areas and have some sort of chance of defending themselves if they run into a monster. Now, I know I've been really harsh with the game this far, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its qualities. I don't believe you come to Dystopia Rising for the combat. I believe you come for the great storytelling that the, the owners of the game work so hard to bring you. Every game is unique. Every game is special. And it shows every single time. And I can't commend that enough. And also for the friendships that you make. Most people there are just so polite, so wonderful, so willing to lend a hand, show you the ropes enough that you'll be able to at least function. Not to mention the storytelling and the questing and the adventuring that you have kind of makes up for the lack of good combat. One of the same people who talked to me about the combat system that we ended up going in a, a circle about, he also made this point that I couldn't disagree with. And it was, if I have to choose between great combat and great storytelling, I'll choose great storytelling every time. And I completely agree with that notion because if you have nothing but combat and nothing but action, but no story or plot, what do you have? A Michael Bay film. So anyways, that's my opinion on Dystopia Rising. I really hope you guys like this video. I hope that you guys don't just leave because you think I was just being a dick. I really enjoy all the people that I've met. It's a great community of people. If you just, if you don't really care about combat, if you just want a place where you can be around like-minded people that are super friendly, willing to help out whenever possible, Dystopia Rising is the place to be. If you disagree with this video, hopefully you'll comment below instead of just disliking and unsubscribing and leaving. I hope if you do like it, I'd appreciate it if you did like my video and maybe shared it to some of your friends or other people who might get a kick out of watching this. Um, thank you guys so much. 60 subscribers, this is completely amazing. I'm, I'm so grateful that there's 60 of you out there that think I'm worth listening to to any extent whatsoever. So, ever, so uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you at the next Dystopia Rising event. Have a good one.